So in these last two weeks that we have been talking about sampling distribution, we have learned about chi-square distribution, t distribution, f distribution and the binomial distribution, how is it related to your normal distribution. So all these we have looked at. So now it is also important to see how you can visualize these distributions in Python. So let us begin that and for this we will first of all start with the visualization of chi-square distribution which we have seen is plays a very important role when we are talking about your sample variance and because of its close relation with the standard normal distribution as well. Also it is related to the f distribution as we have seen in the last class also. So let us start with that. So for this as we know first of all we need to import certain libraries so import numpy as np okay so for numerical operations we will have this and import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt okay so this will be used for creating the plots and from scipy stats module we are going to import chi square so basically chi to so this is basically a function which is used for working with your chi square distribution next we would define a range for x values so let me just write x is equal to lin space sorry np dot lin space because it is from it's a function in numpy library and basically it is used to specify the range of values that this x array would contain. So here it would start from 0 to 20 suppose and you need 1000 equidistant points between these two. Okay, So this would basically create an array x. Now you can define the degrees of freedom also because in chi-square we want to show the chi-square distribution for different degrees of freedom. So let us specify what degrees of freedom do we want. Suppose you want to see for the first six ones. Now you can plot this figure plt dot figure. We can specify the fig size as suppose 12 by 8. Now we will initiate a for loop that will iterate over these degrees of freedom and for each degree of freedom it would calculate the pdf values and then it will plot that figure. So likewise it will keep on going for these six degrees of freedom. So to initiate that for loop we would write for dof in this that we have over here values so that to differentiate it with this variable so dof in these values we would find pdf which is chi2 dot pdf where x is the input that we have obtained from here and your other one would be the corresponding degrees of freedom okay so for each degree of freedom in this list that we have created it would calculate the pdf values for the chi square distribution here chi2 dot pdf is basically a function from your scipy library which is used to display the chi-square distribution values. Fine. So after this we can write plt dot plot x would be there that is x axis pdf would be your the density that we have and we want to label f degrees of freedom is equal to dof because first it will evaluate this string and then we will solve it further plt dot plot x pdf label is this fine now you want to set the limit of y axis to start from 0 to and end at 0 0.5 so let me just write it 0 to 0 0.5 okay if you do not want that you can change this 
right you can make it up to 0 to 1 because sometimes when you take it in a wider range then the other graphs become very cluttered around each other and it does not give a good visualization so for that it is better to specify it then obviously we can write x label so let us label the x axis as simply your x sorry it should be a curly bracket over here then what will be your y label y label we can just simply say the pdf we want this to appear and the title title would be chi square distribution chi square distribution for different degrees of freedom so we can just mention this much we want the legend to appear plot dot legend and then we if you want the grids then you can mention this as true and finally we would display the plot that you have generated so far yes so this is what you have made over here you can see that x axis over here we have displayed the x label as x on the y axis you are displaying pdf and the overall title of this plot is chi square distribution and in this legend you can see that it is displaying which color represents which degrees of freedom okay degrees of freedom is equal to 1 because this is what we have written over here right suppose let me just write dof if you just want the degrees of freedom it would give you like this okay and it is displaying so you can see that for 1 and 2 it is in this shape right blue one and this one is orange and when you are increasing the number of degrees of freedom the shape is now changing and it is becoming right skewed it is becoming less right skewed and moreover it is start going if you take for larger degrees of freedom it might even be becoming normal so maybe we can make here suppose 6 instead of 6 let me see for 10 what happens you see for 10 degrees of freedom you see that it has become more and more symmetric we can further increase it to see the pattern suppose for 15 degrees of freedom it is going like this right because here we have restricted it to 0 to 20 only in this case suppose you take it to 0 to 40 and then run this so you can see so depending upon the degrees of freedom the shape of the chi square distribution changes because that is the only parameter in your chi square distribution and if you increase the degrees of freedom as you move ahead this shape will become more and more symmetric at some point it will become nearly symmetric that is your normal distribution and so on now another important distribution that arises from your chi square and the standard normal distribution is your t distribution so basically in this one we have plotted in the same plot we have displayed multiple chi square distribution curves and each with its unique degrees of freedom okay so you can compare this these plots with respect to the degrees of freedom and you can see that how the degrees of freedom basically affect the distribution shape okay so in this one also let us do for the t distribution so we need certain libraries so numpy we already have matplotlib i think we also have that let me just check it yes from scipy.stats we have imported chi2 now in this case we need some other library because we would be working with t distribution so we need t function over here okay now we would define a range of x values for this plot so let me just write it so x would be n from numpy library again in the same way we would define it x np len space and it will go suppose from minus 5 to 5 and we need 1000 points in between so basically it is creating an array x containing 
thousand evenly spaced values ranging from minus five to five. We are giving this range because for t distribution it is similar to your normal distribution and its range is from minus infinity to infinity. Unlike your chi square and f distribution, where you can see that it starts from zero to infinity. Okay. Now again, we would define the degrees of freedom. So d o f values. For the same degrees of freedom, we will see, or you can change it also. Suppose this is one, two, and five, ten. Suppose twenty. You are taking. So you have created a list of these degrees of freedom. Okay, and we are going to first of all mention the size of this plot, and then plot dot figure. Fig size is equal to. Twelve by eight. So now you would create, initiate a for loop, and for each degree of freedom, it will choose from here. It will plot the t distribution, and then it will keep on moving like this. So let me just write for dof in dof underscore values. So you can see that it looks similar to your earlier one. PDF is equal to t dot PDF. So here we are using this function from your SciPy library. So here it would be x comma PDF. Sorry, DOF because the degree of freedom we have to specify. And then we will plot it. PLT dot plot x would be there, and then the PDF that is the value that you have calculated, and we can label it. And we can use this f string over here, degrees of freedom. So maybe just I can write d o d f is equal to. Here we would write d o f. And after this, okay. So first, this d o f will be evaluated from this loop, and then it would print it. And here we can simply print your x label, y, and all other things. So we can write plt dot x label. Again, we can use suppose x values are there. Then for y label, we can have the density suppose, and the plot title would be because this is t distribution. So let us just write its full name: students t distribution for various degrees of freedom. And your next one. Suppose you want the legend, so it would come this way. Then grid can also be added if you do not want. We can leave that. Then we can show the show this plot. So you can see how it looks like, right? Or if you want to add this grid, sometimes it makes more sense to add these grids because it is easy to interpret in that way. You can see the corresponding values on the x and y axis. So here, basically, you have generated the t distribution for varying degrees of freedom. Okay, one is this one. You can see blue, and as you can see you here it is varying from suppose somewhere minus 5 to 5 right because that is what we wanted we wanted from minus 5 to 5 we wanted 1000 equidistant values and these are the corresponding y axis okay so it first chooses one degree of freedom from this finds the pdf that is this one y axis and then it plots that and it displays df is equal to the degree of freedom that is one again this it will go And it will pick another degree of freedom, and this loop will continue till all these figures are made, and then you can finally label your x and this. So you can note that here, this when by writing this, so indentation over here is important because if you write leftmost corner, if you shift this plot to anywhere else, then it basically means that it is not considered in this loop, so it will not draw this plot. Okay. And if you, since you want it to be 
created for each degree of freedom so you need to keep it in a way such that it is read in that for loop itself okay so you can see that the t distributions becomes more similar to your standard normal distribution as the degrees of freedom increase next distribution from this chi and t and then i can make be probably add these comments over here so this is basically visualization of chi square chi square distribution okay and this one is your visualization of t distribution now here we can go for your f distribution f if you remember it is the ratio of your two chi square distributions divided by their respective degrees of freedom okay so it also has a similar shape as you have for the chi square it varies from 0 to infinity so for this also already we have numpy and matplotlib so we will import from scipy dot stats we will import your f function so from scipy dot stats import sorry import f okay so again we can define this array over here so let us see what is the range for x values line space so we can take from 0 to 5 and we can keep 1000 data points in between next in, in f distribution you have two degrees of freedom m and n so we need to define those m values and n values so suppose you need to see for m values let us say these are the value 1 2 5 10 and 15 and and we have this your n values basically as 1 3 5 10 for the same basically so here we have just changed one otherwise if you see for the same degrees of freedom in the numerator and the denominator m values and n values have been provided over here so these are the list that contains these degrees of freedom now we want to create the plot and we will specify the figure size sorry plot dot figure fig size is equal to fig size is 12 by 8 okay so it will create a figure and again we have to initiate a for loop right so that it it iterates over each of these pairs of m and n values and draws your f distribution plot so for this we need both m and n values okay for m n in zip so here you have m values and n values okay so basically this we are using over here zip function basically it is used to pair corresponding elements from m values and n values this list that we have okay and in each iteration these m and n would be set to the current pair of values that has been selected okay so for m and n we will calculate the pdf which is f dot pdf we are using this function over here pdf x would be there m would be there n would be there because here we are saying that for m so m corresponds to m values n values and n corresponds to n values so that is why we are using the same thing over here if you can see from here also we have written the dof values for dof in dof values so that same variable that we have defined here that comes over this line now we write this plt dot plot x would be there as you know pdf would be there x and y axis we have defined label suppose you want f 
so you want m values also so it can be given as m and for n it would be evaluated and then substituted over here okay so this would create the plots and you can now mention the labels also all right we can just use the same things and we can edit it so x this is fine so we can write here f distribution okay so let us see how it is displaying okay so for different values of m and n you have obtained these plots so if you want suppose here these are not clearly visible so maybe we could limit this y axis so for that we can add one more line over here plt dot y limit let us keep the top as 2 and bottom as 0 so it will go from 0 to 2 only so if you run this so now you can see that in the y axis you have only marked till 2 okay and these plots are clearly visible in this case so we see that we can compare these distributions for different values of m and n and it can be seen that it has a similar way as we have done for the chi square also initially it is very right skewed but then as the degrees of freedom increases it becomes more and more symmetric okay it approaches your normal distribution that is why your normal distribution has so much significance not only in statistics but in all the disciplines across engineering disciplines and science sciences because of the central limit theorem also and if any distribution that you use you can justify it that obviously it was going to end up in a normal distribution most of them so these are the ones for mean and variance we have come across these things in when we are dealing with mean we have this t distribution when we have chi, chi square and f are used for sample variances or you have ratio of sample variances and the for the proportion we use your binomial distribution okay so now we are going to plot the binomial distribution with different n and p so here let us so we have numpy and matplotlib so from scipy from scipy dot stats we are going to import binom function over here okay we are going to define a range of x values so x and p from numpy we will use a range from 0 to 21 okay so it will create an array it will contain the values from 0 to 20 as we know that it will not include the right the end one it subtracts one from that so it will go from 0 to 20 so these basically x represents the possible number of success in the binomial distribution and that will be used in the x axis see in binomial we have two parameters n and p right and binomial basically says that number of success in n independent bernoulli trials so you need the number of trials that have to be fixed you have to fix the probability of success and you need the those x right how many success are there so number of success we are taking as this now now we need also to define your n values so let us say that it is 10 20 okay so these are the number of trials and the corresponding p values let us take as suppose p let it be 0.5 okay so this will create two list over here n values for n and p values now since there would be this is a discrete case so in this one we cannot just add, uh, connect these points as we have over here these plots right so for that let us first define certain colors and see that how it would help us in finally visualizing the binomial distribution okay so let us define the list of colors so let the colors be 
be blue green or red okay now we can specify the figure size figure and fig size would be 12 by 8 okay so it will create this matplotlib figure size width will be 12 and uh, 8 uh, and height would be 8 units now we will just take this also color.idx so it would basically be indexed for cycling through these different colors okay so color dot in underscore index we are specifying it as zero as of now now we want to create a loop that would iterate through different values of n and p so for that for n in n values okay and for p in p values we calculate the pmf so here we have the pmf so we will use this binom function over here binom dot pmf so x would be there n and p would be there right and it's a bind, uh, it's a discrete case so suppose you want vertical lines starting from x axis to those data points you do not want these curves so for that instead of using p plot so we will here use v lines plt dot v lines okay so v lines x we would specify x that is already here and we want it to the lines to start at x axis that means y would be zero so this zero is coming pmf would be there and then label would be there that how many f n is equal to n so this would be evaluated and for p also it would be evaluated okay and you can specify the colors also so colors it should keep on updating so colors we can write color idx okay so basically we are specifying the colors of the vertical lines right so suppose we want blue color for a separate binomial case when you have n as 10 and p is 0.5 the next could be green color will be used for 20 n and 5.5 p okay so here you we have defined and we have written it in this order so it will move on okay so it uses this color idx this variable to select a color from this colors list okay now we also want this color index to move so idx is equal to so in bracket we would write color underscore idx plus 1 then we will use the mod of this modulus function length of the colors so basically what we are doing over here is that we are cycling through these colors in the colors list okay in the list that we have defined over here it increments the color index variable by 1 and then takes the modulus of it with the length of the colors list okay this ensures that when you are using this color index when it reaches the end of your list it will wrap around to the beginning and you will be allowed to use a different color for each different n and p okay so in this way it would keep on moving now once you have defined these you can simply have your x label y label and the title so we can use it so x label we can have as the number of success because in your binomial number of success is your random variable in which you are interested here we will have your pmf we can write corresponding probabilities and this is basically your binomial distribution okay plot legend 
this is a discrete case so maybe we can skip this grid because it might because there will be vertical lines also it might create confusion and this is also not needed in this case so this is how it looks right or if you can make this let us see the difference yeah this is also looking better so you see that this these are the blue so here it is overlapping with this green so you do not see it clearly but for n and p it is in this way right it is you can see that is more or less like a normal distribution so n is 10 so the blue one corresponds to n is 10 and p is 0.5 and whereas for 20 and 0.5 it is this so if you change this suppose 10 and 30 we take the sample size is 30 then you can see that it separately plots these two because there will be some distance in these values so by just looking at these two you can see that how these distributions basically look like your normal binomial case right Since NP we have taken till 21, so if you want more than 3, suppose 10, 30, maybe I can take 50 and make this one as 41. So let us run this. So let us have 3 ones, 3 plots. Okay. So NP approximation should be satisfied. You can see that when NP, in this case, NP is your 5 then also it is showing but when it is more right then in this case it is becoming more and more symmetric or more and more like your normal distribution so this basically shows how you can visualize different distributions this is for binomial we have seen f distribution t and chi square okay